Hello everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Let me get the camera right. There we go. I'm back in the frame. There we go. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for joining me on Sundays where we get to go live and answer as many questions as I can. Those of you that not, did not feel like you got your answers uh, to questions that you have, please uh, you can email me at Dr. Carmen Bryant and you can set up an appointment where I can individualize uh, a session with you to find out more details about your situation because each individual narcissist is an individual, has an, is a person with narcissistic personality disorder, let's put it that way, or we presume that they have NPD, but each person is still different. Each person still functions a certain way. We don't, we, I need more details. So just to let you guys know, thank you guys also for my podcast family that is joining us uh, so that if you want to listen to podcasts, you don't have an opportunity to watch the video, you're welcome to go there. So today I want to talk about what extreme measures does a somatic narcissist go to to maintain their image? Remember, the title of my book is Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. And that was more focused toward those with somatic symptoms or a somatic narcissist. And you know with a somatic narcissist, a somatic narcissist is more concerned about how people see them. They cover up their faults or their uh, shortcomings or they're very, very low self-esteem individuals. They're, they are in fear of rejection and abandonment and they have to create this facade or this illusion of perfection. And so they'll go to all measures to maintain that image as they build themselves. And remember in, in another video, I discussed that, you know, when a somatic narcissist is looking for a supply, you have those individual ones that are into their looks, into their sexual conquest, into presenting themselves as being rich, famous, among the elite, always rubbing shoulders with those in high places, uh, you know, the, the knowledge that they have, they listen so that they can integrate and, and kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? hide in plain sight. And so usually the supply that they look for, male or female, the supply that they look for is one that probably is arrogant. Now they may not have narcissistic personality disorder. However, they may be prideful, arrogant, or, you know, they know that they're beautiful. You know, they, they have a certain image that they maintain, a certain job that they had, you know, they're kind of uh, bougie, you know, they could be bougie if that, if I can say that bougie or stuck up or, you know, they're, they're better than the rest of the people because you have to, think arrogance, pride, and vanity is just a cover-up for those that have low self-esteem and low self-worth. That narcissist picks that up. But remember I said that narcissists may pick that up and pull that partner in. Remember, it's also a challenge because everybody can't have that individual person. But it's a challenge to the narcissist so they can show people, see, I can get that. I can, I can pull that in. See, I can pull, and they're shocked too, that they can pull that in. But nine times out of 10, when they meet someone that is arrogant and prideful and, and kind of stuck on themselves and pretty or handsome, they know nine times out of 10, I keep saying nine times out of 10, I guess that's my word for today. Nine times out of 10 is the word for today. But more likely than none, that's the next word, more likely than none, they know that that individual has a reputation, a reputation and an image to maintain as well. So they're not that quick to go and tell people the things that they find out about this narcissist because they have to maintain their own reputation. Not only that, they know that they're dealing with an individual that may be emotionally damaged, low self-esteem, so it's easier to pull that person in and on top of that, they're the type, or somatic may be the type, when they're pulling them in and love bombing, they're going to feed them everything that they want. I'll buy you a Gucci this, I'll buy you a Chanel this, I'll buy you this type of car, I'll buy you this type of house, I'll make sure that you're dressed like that. And you can see like the person transform to kind of look like the narcissist. When I say look like the narcissist, that narcissist is now grooming them that how you're supposed to appear with me. So they'll go all out, spend all sorts of money to groom this new supply to help this uh, this new supply look like something like the narcissist. The nar and on top of that, you guys also know that not all somatic narcissists have money. They're not all wealthy, even though they may appear to have money. Most of them are also very irresponsible. Not all of them, but a lot of them are also very irresponsible when it comes to money and finances. And it's usually the partner or the supply that's 
more responsible that has to maintain. So the stress of maintaining household, maintaining bills, they, because they have this high spending habit. Not only do they have a high spending habit, not all of them. Remember, this is not a general statement because of the fact that they're always trying to impress. They're trying to go to the most expensive restaurants, wear clothes like they see these people of wealth wear clothes. Then when they have uh, secondary supplies, they have to dish out money to impress these new supplies, new cars every year, different types of clothes all the time. Now they may go from bootleg clothing where they get, you know, you see them with all these fancy clothes and purses and, and heels and red bottoms. And if you look close enough, it's painted red bottoms. And, but it, or it's the, it's, what is it when you can buy the, the, the fabricated version of the real thing, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but, but everything is, is not the, most of it is not the real thing. They paint, paint their jewelry so that every time they come out, they look like they're on a video or they have different jewelry on when in actuality, you know, they go home and, and paint the jewelry and then take uh, uh, what is a fingernail polish remover and then remove it and then paint it for the next day. They go to extreme measures, even to a point where you have to watch it because a lot of times a new supply doesn't realize they're also doing illegal stuff to maintain that image. Illegal stuff so that they're not being, remember you have trained them. You have trained that narcissist, especially if you're dealing with a somatic narcissist, you have trained them on how not to get caught again. They always get caught. The mask always falls off. But what happened is, is they figured out how you figured it out. So they, when they go into a new relation situationship with a new supply, what they do is, is they put up safeguards that the way that you caught them is not the way that this person will catch them. Now, let's say that this new person obviously does not know what you were dealing with. So they want what you got, but they don't know all the luggage that comes along with that. And that you've been with the person long enough where you know their habits, you know what they do, you know how they are. This new supply doesn't. So to the narcissist, they look like to the narcissist, he or she looks like they're getting over and I have learned to keep myself from getting caught. But remember, they're always thinking ahead so that they don't get caught. I can't do it this way this time. I can't. So if I need this money, I have to lock. This person got away. This old supply got away. So I have to lock in these finances or I have to lock this person in so they can't get away. Now, this narcissist may use the ex-wife or the ex-husband's credit card to impress the new supply. So they run up the bill on the credit card all because they're they're impressing a new supply they steal money they borrow money they may do fraudulent stuff you know you have to watch it they may do fraudulent stuff look at your bank account where's this money coming from because a lot of time the finances does not it, there's it's not equivalent to the lifestyle that they're living no one has really investigated them a lot of you know that there's sometimes no one is really investigating them the irs has not looked into the stuff that they have sometimes they do sometimes they don't especially if it's not a multi-billionaire narcissist that you're dealing with when you're dealing with that, you know, the, the narcissist that's, that's average income, but their lifestyle is beyond average, or they may have a, a decent, you know, a decent amount of money coming in, but the lifestyle is still more extravagant than the finances coming in. Guarantee you that supply is probably in the background trying to manage everything. Upset that this person is irresponsible. Upset that every year they're getting a new car. You know, every time you turn around, you're getting clothes. Every time you turn around, you're getting this. Every time you turn around, you got to have this cologne or this watch or this jewelry or this you know, because their whole thing is I'm going to, and they may tell you, I'm trying to live my best life. You only live life once. Now this sounds pretty, pretty rational, but when you are putting people in debt, you know that if you're involved with that person, you have to think about, okay, I understand living your best life, but that doesn't mean you have to impoverish us while you're trying to live your best life. But they're living, when they say living their best life, I'm going to live my life on the edge because everybody else is living like this, but you don't have the finances everybody else has. You see, so a narcissist, a somatic narcissist will go to the extreme, stealing, um, I mean, uh, uh, what else, counterfeiting, um, uh, anything. Uh, drug sales, you know, you, you do have drug dealers that are narcissists, but then you have the average narcissist that may be a business person or work in the corporate world and they're doing other things in the back. Believe it or not, there are some that actually um, involve themselves in prostitution, male and female. Or you have some, what they do is, is they get what supply to get money from the supplies. So they're living this lifestyle that they have these these other secondary supplies out there where they're, they will beat them up, they will harass them, or they will love bomb them, or they'll come to them. And if they can't get money or material possessions from them, then they'll discard them in silent treatment until that one gives in and gives them money. And they may have a harem of men or a harem of women that they go to 
and they collect money they get money now they may call it pimping you know the lower grade the, the the young ones call it pimping we call it ignorance and beating people up and and harassing people to get money and then the older ones they're just playing a game you know and this is how they maintain their lifestyle or they get these women or these men to buy them clothes and shoes you know give them money to help them pay for the car and if you look a lot of times they're very irresponsible you can look at them sometimes they won't pay their child support yet they're living this life you know they're living this life but they don't even think I can't afford to pay child support I don't make enough money but you're driving this you're wearing this you're living like this you're pretending this you're posting pictures like this you're traveling and doing this you're showing this right here you're showing off your jewelry but they don't have enough money to pay child support think about it they'll go to extremes and maintain and then for those of you that have to seek child support to support your children then you become their worst they become your worst nightmare because you're trying to take something from me they don't put two and two together that you're just trying to make sure you can maintain a, maintain a lifestyle for your child I'm not saying those of you that are trying to go above and beyond but for those of you trying to maintain a lifestyle for that child or just to support the child you need help to support that child and they don't want to do it they don't look at it as support for the child they look at it as you're getting something from your taking something from me so I'm gonna punish you so that's when you notice that a lot of times they'll use parental alienation they'll they'll start attacking the kids because that kid is the common denominator between the two of you that that is what you have passion about they do not love their children listen they don't love their children it doesn't matter what it looks like remember they have to maintain the image so if they have all this stuff they're gonna make sure when they pull the child in guess what this child is gonna get name brand this and name brand this and computer this and cameras and trips and 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 money and this because to a child wow I get all this and and guess what when you go to school what what happens is that peer pressure they're all looking like wow your mom did this or your dad this did this because now you're the hero and your dad or your mom is the hero because they're doing all this for you so they throw this money out there to pull this child in they're love bombing this child to, to get loyalty so this child has loyalty to this narcissist when in actuality, they don't have any feelings toward the child. The child is a source of supply. The child is a, a means to make people think or to, to create this facade that they're this perfect parent, this wonderful parent. And, I can't, and then the sad part about it is sometimes these new supply who don't know, you know, these new supplies that don't know play the game right along with them or with her. And they tell these stories, they smear campaign you to make you look like the worst parent in the world. Because remember, they know that you know their secrets. They know that the mask is going to fall off. So they have to go ahead and do damage control ab above and beyond because you have a lot of information. They do damage control by smearing your name so that as things come out and begin to present themselves, they've already got a story to tell concerning what you're about to say. And this is how a lot of those new supply become flying monkeys. But when you're dealing with a somatic narcissist, a somatic malignant narcissist you know these these little boogers here these little troll grasshoppers green jolly green gi green giant you know whatever size or shape they come in colors or whatever you know some of these are boogers when you mess with their reputation or when you say you take them to court you win they're already thinking of how to get you back they're already thinking of a way to pay you back for causing a narc injury so be prepared and I just want you guys to know and we're just talking about the, the somatic narcissist and the means and the depth that they will go to a lot of you guys have stories I know you're gonna start posting some of yours and thank you so much for listening to me I just wanted to bring it out there talk about it for just a minute so you guys know I want you guys to be educated to understand what you're dealing with so you can be aware of what you're dealing with thank you so much for tuning in please go to my mentors YouTube channel to Helen Sadler destiny helper and you can listen to her talk about the uh, spiritual perspective and biblical perspective concerning a narcissist or that narcissistic personality disorder the person and you have you know you, you have more freedom of asking questions where she can provide you with answers on that side usually I come from the experiential side as a therapist what I've witnessed what I've experienced you know what I've seen what people have told me because I'm in a position where people tell me their stories I'm in a position where I'm, I'm helping people and I have to listen to the stories and even my own personal experiences and so I I bring it from that perspective and I try to do it in layman terms so that you guys understand what I'm talking about and it makes sense that's why I use a lot of analogies 
So also you can join me on podcast. I'm on Podbean is the main platform. Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Heart Google Play, and I think I'm on a couple of other ones. I'm not sure. And you can also find me on Periscope on Sundays. I'm on Periscope. Uh, I think I'm under Dr. Carmen Bryant. I think I'm under Dr. Carmen Bryant. But then on YouTube, I'm Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Instagram, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. And Facebook, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse and Psychological Health Consultants and Services. Those that are seeking coaching services, you're welcome to email me at Dr. Carmen Bryant at Outlook.com. It is underneath my video, all the information. Those that have asked about donations, I have my PayPal link, my Cash App on there. So if you want to send, I am so grateful. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. By supporting this channel and sending in donations, it helps me to expand. And uh, as you guys know, I'm working on classes. I just got some equipment in. I'm working on classes on a website, uh, conferences, but all that costs money. You know, when you're when you're using hosting networks and stuff, that costs money. And my first priority is my counseling clients. So that's why sometimes it's a little slower for me to do things because I need your assistance to help. When you donate, it helps me to be able to buy the equipment, expand the, uh, you know, what, what I'm doing, build classes, and even trying to build workbooks for you. Um, so I know some of you guys like workbooks, all that costs money. And so, like I said, my office is pr first priority, but when you donate, it helps me to expand. And that's why it takes a little slower. Some of you guys, when are you going to come out with it? It takes money, y'all. takes money. So, and I have to be frugal, I have to be, I have to be mindful, you know, you don't want to spend all the baby's Christmas money, you know, and, and, and I'm trying to help you guys and I got a home to take care of. So you guys remember when you guys donate, you're helping me to make this happen. So I appreciate you guys. If you're looking for counseling, go to betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. It is a vetted source. You can get a 10% discount by clicking on my name and then you can find a licensed counselor in your state and you can ask some questions, vet and ask questions. Many people have said that they have some awesome experience with, with uh, cl clinicians or uh, counselors that understand this type of trauma. So I appreciate you guys. And as always, you guys go be great.